On a sunny day, a man was diving in shallow waters near South Africa. At one point, he saw something that didn't catch his eye at first. A pile of shells that looked as if it had been put together. Maybe by some other diver, he must have told himself. But out of all these shells came the most unusual of creatures, an octopus. The gorgeous underwater animal looked straight at the man before swimming away. Impressed by his new acquaintance, the diver started visiting the octopus every day. He watched it use shells and seaweed to protect itself and learned how it hunted and cared for its eggs. All these encounters became the basis for a now famous documentary. In the movie, the diver wanted to study the relationship between a wild octopus and its observer. Initially, the octopus was a bit too shy to let the man get close. But over time, it began to trust him and even explored his body. At one point, the octopus even rested on the diver's chest. The man soon began to look at the underwater creature as his octopus friend. Sure, the documentary did make it look like a true friendship, but that was most likely because of all the close-ups and eerie music. But you can't really know what the octopus is thinking. Maybe what looks like tenderness is just curiosity or confusion. Maybe an apparent hug is really just a defense mechanism. Some people may love octopuses, but can they really be friends with a human? Until they learn to talk, I guess we'll never know. That doesn't make an octopus less of an interesting creature, though. Apart from those quirky sets of tentacles, obviously, octopuses have another characteristic that sets them apart from other sea creatures. A recent study that involved studying the footage of octopuses living underwater shows that they sometimes develop this unusual behavior. They seem to throw things at each other on purpose. It can be anything from dirt from the bottom of the sea to shells or rocks. Octopuses are known to be solitary creatures, so when something or someone like an underwater camera person gets too close to them, they might lash out. Just as we have yet to discover the limits of our galaxies and constellations, we know very little about the bottom of the sea. It's one of the reasons why we find it so hard to explain the behavior of some underwater creatures. The truth is, we don't have good enough technology able to deal with harsh conditions and a limited amount of light underwater. You might have asked yourself at one point, what's the deepest part of the ocean? It's called the Mariana Trench. We don't really know exactly how deep this giant hole is since it's too difficult to measure, but it's somewhere around 6.8 miles deep and five times longer than the Grand Canyon. This massive underwater trench was first studied back in 1875 with the help of a weighted rope. Back in 2012, a Canadian film director reached the bottom of the trench in a submersible vessel called the Deep Sea Challenger. Some of the most bizarre creatures on the planet were discovered here, including the Dumbo octopus, the sea cucumber, and the goblin shark. The Mariana Trench got its name from the nearby Mariana Islands, which were named Las Marianas in honor of Spanish Queen Mariana of Austria. The Mariana Trench might be the deepest part of the ocean that we know of, but one other mysterious phenomenon that's interesting for researchers is called phantom bottoms. In the late 1940s, when the sonar became standard equipment, ships and submarines noticed unexpected signals coming from the ocean. Those signals came from areas where no seafloor was supposed to exist. What's even more mysterious is that this fake seafloor appeared to move. One researcher at Scripps University found out that these phantom bottoms showing on maps were indeed alive. They were made out of a layer of jellyfish, shrimps, and other deep sea creatures. The reason why they move is that they rise to the surface at night to feed. To top it all off, even the way these creatures move is kind of calculated. They don't just move randomly, but seem to gather together by species. We used to believe underwater animals behave this way only to avoid being caught by predators. It's a mystery to scientists why they group in the same way to form a fake seabed. 
our curiosity about the deep waters doesn't stop at the seafloor. If you went on a vacation to the beach when you were young, you probably remember the fun of digging in the sand. As the hole got deeper, you may have asked yourself, could I dig all the way to the other side of the earth? None of us have ever found out. Our parents took us home when it got dark and chilly. Scientists are more reasonable when it comes to this subject. For starters, they know the best place to start digging would be underwater since those regions are already deeper than what we can find on land. They also do not have the ambition to drill a tunnel through Earth. It's not even possible. That's mostly because of the extreme heat and pressure inside our planet. Even if we could technically dig a tunnel, it would not be safe to travel through it. However, reaching the mantle and retrieving a sample would be a huge scientific achievement, similar to landing on the moon. What we live on is called Earth's crust. Underneath it, there are other layers called the mantle, outer core, and inner core. Researchers have been trying to drill into Earth's mantle since the 1960s, but they haven't succeeded. Some failed due to technical issues, and others were unlucky and chose the wrong places to drill. Our planet's mantle is made of molten rock. Wouldn't that be dangerous if we ever reached it? Scientists say we have nothing to worry about, though. If and when the drillers eventually pierce through the crust underwater, hot molten rock won't pop up the hole and spill onto the seafloor like it would during a volcanic eruption. Mantle rocks aren't solid, sure, but they move slowly, at the same speed as your fingernails grow. Another of those famous deep-sea mysteries is that of the 1997 Bluke. You heard that right. I'm talking about a weird sound that seemed to come from deep under the waves. People heard it in the South Pacific. No one had ever recounted a sound like that before. Some thought it must have been emitted by a strange creature living deep in the ocean. It didn't help that the noise came from a location mentioned in a story by famous writer H.P. Lovecraft. In his story, it was a creature called Cthulhu that lived there. In the novel, the author described it as a large, human-like monster with tentacles on its face and wings on its back. For many years, people tried to figure out where the noise came from. It wasn't until 2005 that they concluded it was from icebergs breaking off of glaciers. Some people still don't believe that this explanation truly makes sense and are searching for a different reason for the blue. If creatures living outside of our planet ever decided to come to visit, you wouldn't expect them to go straight to the bottom of the sea, right? Well, some people claim there's a sort of spaceship on the ocean floor discovered in 2011. It's basically an oval-shaped object located on the bottom of the Baltic Sea. In 2012, a team of divers explored the anomaly and found what appeared to be a staircase and other structures on its surface. This only added to the belief that the large object had been made by someone and wasn't just a natural phenomenon. Even more bizarre, close to the unidentified anomaly, the explorer's electrical equipment, like sonar instruments and satellite phones, started to malfunction. Some scientists believe it just to be a glacial deposit or some other natural formation, but they still don't know for sure what it is.